All right, everybody, let's continue on our journey in the book of Colossians. We're still on chapter 1, and I'm going to start reading again at verse 15. This is what Paul says. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on the earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he was now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you have faith, in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from hope, the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. The word that you need to understand as we go through this particular portion of the book of Colossians is that word preeminent. Literally means above all things is what it has the meaning of. So Christ is preeminent, or he is supreme. He is the highest level of authority. And here's, Paul's explaining why. The first thing that we're going to need to understand here is that Christ is superior above all else. In verses 15 through 20, they are giving a list of things that how cry of who Christ really is. Let's look at them, shall we? In verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God. He's the likeness. He is the same as God himself. Not only that, but we see that he is the firstborn of creation. This doesn't mean that that he was created. No. In fact, it means that he was there before creation. That he is before all of creation. That he is, has always been. We keep going down this list. We see the next, that he created all things. And that all things were created for him. And in him all things are, are held together, it says. Right? Verse 17, and he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. In other words, everything on this earth, everything that was ever created, is all for one purpose, to bring glory to God. And in him, it all works together. He's the one who set forth everything into motion. He's the one who put the laws of science and everything in. He is greater than I want to run through real quick with you four more things that Paul says. I'm not going to read it necessarily from the text of Scripture. You can read it in verses 15 through 20. But we see also that he is the head of the church. We often talk about being the body of Christ. And here we, he is described as the head, the top priority of the church. He was in the beginning before the foundation. He was the beginning and the firstborn of the dead. What that really means is he came back alive again. Jesus was, he died and he came back alive again. Just as we were dead in our trespasses and said, and someday we, our physical bodies will die. But we will also rise again when Christ comes back for his church. So he's the firstborn of the dead. He's the first one raised back. We have only two more left here of what Christ is and how he is superior. Paul also uses the term that all of, of the fullness of God dwells within him. He is fully God and fully man. And last but not least here, we see that he reconciles everything to God. The only way that we can have forgiveness of our sins is through Christ's work on the cross. He died on the cross to take the punishment for you and for me. He is the only way. Jesus said in the book of John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by not me, but Christ. So the first thing we see here in this passage is that Christ is superior. The second thing we see here is none other than this. is that we need reconciling. Verse 21. And you who were once alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless. There is nothing good within us 
In the text of Scripture, it says all our sins are as filthy rags. All our good deeds are as filthy rags. That's what our sins are. We need reconciling, and that's why Christ went to the cross of Calvary. That's why he died, and that's why he rose again. Last but not least, in verse 23, if indeed you continue in the faith, steadfast and stable, we need, we get reconciliation through steadfast faith. We put our trust and hope in Jesus. I heard a song once say this, all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. I've been washed by the blood. So let me ask you a few questions. Do you understand that Christ is superior? He's above all else. And do you, does that refle- is that reflected in your life? Do you get reflected that Christ is preeminent, that he is above all else? Number two, realize that you are alienated from God before you accept Christ. Alienated means you're separated from him. And lastly, do you have the steadfast faith in Christ? That faith that goes beyond no matter what's going on. We live in these uncertain times and it doesn't really matter because we know our faith and our trust, our hope. Our confidence is in Jesus and Jesus alone. Can you say that? And if you can, how is that changing dramatically your life? Take comfort knowing that Christ is preeminent. He is above all else. And he's got it all under control. So all our hope can be put in him. I hope that you continue to read through the book of Colossians. I can't wait until next week where we can do another video together as we try to finish up chapter one. I'll see you all again next week. Bye-bye.